Good day! My name is Camille S. A. Fernandez from Marketing Dash One. In this presentation, I will discuss the article entitled Intersexuality and Gender Identity Differentiation, which was written by a doctor of philosophy named Kenneth J. Sucker. Over the years, there has been a periodic debate regarding the appropriate sex assignment and subsequent gender of infants as well as children with intersexuality. For this reason, the article aims to review how gender identity is formed in people who have physical intersex condition. Now, before we discuss the main topic, let us first proceed with defining some relevant terminology. Under the parameters of biological sex, we have intersexuality na kung saan ito yung naging preferred umbrella term used to encompass a diverse class of syndromes that is characterized by some abnormality or kaya naman anomaly in physical sex differentiation. In short, ito yung estado kung saan ang isang tao ay may mga katangi ang sexual na nauugnay sa parehong kasarian. Bilang halimbawa, maaaring ang isang tao ay pinanganak na may parehong pang babae at panlalaki na ari or genitalia. Next, under the parameters of psychosexual differentiation, it is deconstructed into four components, namely gender identity, gender role, sexual orientation, and sexual identity. So, starting off with number one, gender identity refers to a young child's developing a fundamental sense of belonging to one sex and not the other. Kung baga, ito yung personal conception ng isang tao regarding sa kung ano ang gender na kinabibilangan niya. It's about how you see yourself and identify the gender that you belong with regardless of sex or physiological parts na meron ka at birth. Also, the term was simultaneously introduced in early 1960s by Hooker, a psychologist, and Stoller, a psychoanalyst. Additionally, it is mentioned in the article na yung measurement of gender identity can be assessed if gagamit tayo ng structured verbal interview techniques. Number two, the term gender role has been used extensively by developmental psychologists to refer to behaviors, attitudes, and personality traits that a society in a given culture and historical period designates as masculine or feminine that is more appropriate to or typical of the male or female social role. Ibig sabihin, yung gender role ay tumutukoy sa mga behaviors, attitudes, and personality traits na itinalaga bilang masculine and feminine ng isang society na may particular na kultura at historical period. Plus, sinasabi rin na ang gender role ay yung mga kinoconsider bilang mas angkop o typical na papel sa lipunan ng isang babae at lalaki. Hence, masasabing nakabase ang gender role sa expectations ng society like kung paano dapat kumilos ang isang tao based upon sa kanyang assigned sex. Then, para naman ma-measure natin yung gender role behavior sa mga bata, maaari nating obserbahan ang mga sumusunod, like yung affiliative preference for same-sex versus opposite-sex queers, fantasy roles, toy interest, dress-up play, and interest in rough and tumble play. Number three, the term sexual orientation is defined by a person's relative responsiveness to sexual stimuli. Sa madaling salita, tungkol ito sa kung kanino sexually attracted ang isang tao. Tapos, pwedeng yung sexual orientation niya ay maging self-identified as heterosexual kung sexually attracted lang to people of opposite sex, bisexual kung sexually attracted to people of same sex as well as opposite sex, and homosexual kung sexually attracted lang to people of same sex. Then, in contemporary research na related sa sexology, gumagamit doon ng psychophysiological techniques like phenyl platysmography or vaginal photoplatysmography para ma-assess ang sexual orientation. Although mabilis na rin naging common ang paggamit ng structured interview assessments, particular na kapag ang mga respondents ay walang matibay na dahilan para itago ang kanilang sexual na orientasyon. Now, for the last terminology, we have number four, Sexual identity which refers to the sense of self in relation to one's sexuality. Ibig sabihin, it is how you define yourself 
As an additional point, it is important to uncouple the construct of sexual orientation from the construct of sexual identity. Kasi, for example, maaaring ang isang tao ay predominantly aroused by homosexual stimuli, but possible na hindi niya i-consider yung kanyang sarili bilang isang homosexual. May mga instances na ganon. Furthermore, in contemporary Western culture, maraming individuals ang primarily or exclusively na sexually responsive to same-sex persons, yet hindi nila ina-adopt yung pagkakaroon ng homosexual or gay identity. Moving on sa pinaka-main topic, we have the which sex, which gender, kung saan nakasaad dito na a common aspect of several physical intersex condition involves the differentiation of ambiguous external genitalia. When this occurs, kadalasan ay nagkakaroon ng uncertainty pagdating sa number one, sex assignment if dapat ba male or female, and number two, yung sa gender assignment kung dapat ba ay boy or girl, ang isang neonate o newborn child. Plus, yung mga uncertainties na ganun ay kadalasang nagtudulot ng pagkabalisa sa mga magulang at sa mga professional na involved when it comes to determining the sex of the baby. Isa pa, itinuturing ng maraming physician yung uncertainty na yon bilang medical and psychosocial emergency which is nangangailangan ng agarang atensyon at resolusyon. In one study, interns Peterson and Reddell had parent collaborators call their friends following the birth of their babies. Overall, 80% of the initial questions were about the baby's sex. Hence, no one should be surprised na totoo talagang importante or nagmamatter ang sex of a newborn dahil patunay na nga rito yung Nabanggit na study kung saan ang most frequently asked question is about the sex, particularly tinatanong if babae ba or lalaki yung baby. Sex and gender assignment at birth are believed to be the first of a cascade of events that fall under the rubric of gender socialization. Kumbaga, sinasabi lang dito na nagsisimula ang gender socialization upon the assignment of both sex and gender sa mga newborn babies. Kasi nga, nowadays, with the development of techniques such as ultrasound, parents can acquire information about fetal sex, which likely generates a variety of specific feelings and thoughts about their future child. Kasunod nito, kadalasan pumipili na ng pangalan ang mga magulang para sa kanilang magiging anak, in which yung name na mapipili ay may kasama ng stereotypical masculine or feminine connotation. Tapos, it is also common for parents to dress male and female infants in sex stereotypical ways, including the North American tradition of sex dimorphic color coding in pink or blue that began in the 1920s, kung saan parang nagkakaroon ng invisible rule na ang color pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Initial empirical studies, the work of money and colleagues. Beginning in the 1950s, Money and colleagues began to report data on the psychosexual development of children born with physical intersex conditions. They asked whether the gender identity that a hermaphrodite establishes during the course of growing up is concordant with the sex of assignment and rating, or whether it is predominantly concordant with one or another of the physical sexual variables. Regarding this matter, Money concluded that the sex of assignment and rating is consistently a more reliable predictor of hermaphrodite's gender identity. Additionally, Mani et al. offered an additional finding for the relative importance of socialization in terms of determining gender identity differentiation among children with physical intersex condition. It is stated in the article that the clinching piece of evidence concerning the psychologic importance of the sex of assignment and rearing is provided when, among persons of identical physical diagnosis, some are reared as boys, some as girls. It is indeed startling to see, for example, two children with female congenital adrenal hyperplasia in the company of one another in a hospital playroom, one of them entirely feminine in behavior and conduct, the other entirely masculine each according to upbringing. Hence, mapapansin natin dito na 
naka-aapekto talaga yung way kung paano pinalaki ang isang bata sa pagkakaroon niya ng either feminine or masculine behavior. Dahil nga maliable ang gender identity differentiation, it became necessary na palitan yung reliance on identifying the patient's true sex with a different model for guiding decisions regarding gender assignment. As summarized by Mayor Balbert, the model developed by Money and the Johns Hopkins School of Pediatric Endocrinology can be characterized as the optimal gender policy of psychosocial and medical management. As an additional point, this policy aimed to result in the best possible prognosis with regards to the six variables, namely reproductive potential if attainable at all, good sexual function, minimal medical procedures, overall gender-appropriate appearance, stable gender identity, and psychosocial well-being. Appraisal of the Gender Identity Formation Data It is with regard to those physical intersex conditions in which there might be some uncertainty at birth regarding sex assignment that the relative importance of gender socialization can best be evaluated. In genetic females, the most relevant syndrome is CAH or congenital adrenal hyperplasia. On the other hand, when it comes to genetic males, the relevant syndromes include 5-alpha reductase deficiency or 5-ARD, partial androgen insensitivity syndrome, micropenis, aphalia, and cloacal extrophy. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia in genetic females. The syndrome of CAH has been one of the better studied intersex conditions from a psychosexual point of view. In genetic females with CAH, the overproduction of androgenic steroids during fetal development causes genital masculinization ranging from mild clitoral enlargement to complete fusion of the labioscrotal folds with the phallic urethra. Hence, it creates uncertainty with regards to sex assignment at birth. Pero, with proper diagnosis naman, pwedeng magsagawa ng medical interventions like surgery para makontrol or ma-eliminate yung postnatal virilization after nun ang magiging assigned sex na is female and yung baby ay palalakihin na as a girl. Gender Identity Differentiation in Childhood So, now, what do we know about the gender identity development of girls with CAH race under these conditions. Based on several studies conducted over the past 30 plus years, we can conclude that the vast majority of girls with CAH appear to develop a female typical gender identity. Gender identity differentiation in adulthood. Adult follow-up of women with CAH provides a more definitive picture with regards to gender identity differentiation. Although gender identity conflict or confusion can certainly be ascertained in children and adolescents, one should note that yung process of gender change ay kadalasang mahaba at komplikado. For example, in women without known somatic intersexuality who go through gender reassignment, such as female to male transsexuals, the mean age at transition is usually in the mid-20s. Other aspects of psychosexual differentiation, as mentioned in the article, there is now considerable evidence that gender role behavior of CAH girls is masculinized, in the sense that on average, these girls show a shift in the direction of male typical interests and activity preferences. Halimbawa na lang pagdating sa paglalaro or particularly in sex type play behavior, if ikukumpara natin sa mga unaffected sisters and female cousins, CAH girls play more when they use toys that are typically made for males. Tapos, on the other hand, hindi sila gaano naglalaro kapag ang gagamitin na toys are typically for females. Toward a resolution, the North American Task Force on Intersexuality. In 1999, Ian Aronson, a pediatric urologist, at the Medical School of South Carolina, founded the North American Task Force on Intersexuality, kung saan yung multidisciplinary task force na ito ay may mission na mag-develop ng multi-center empirical studies designed to answer some of the most pressing questions regarding long-term outcome 
for intersex people. Hence, cross-center collaboration is vital in order to generate sample sizes with sufficient statistical power that will allow us to answer these questions, including gender identity differentiation, the effects of surgical interventions on sexual functioning, and general quality of life parameters. So, that is all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.